Welcome back, everybody, to Sports Betting Truth. And you guessed it, we are back on the horrible website known as Reddit to discuss a post that a few of you have asked me to analyze because they, too, browse the horrible website known as Reddit and the sports book community there. And this is a post that has been showing up over the past couple of years, uh, every week during NFL season, where they talk about teasers specifically NFL teasers, and it's a weekly post. And so some of you have wanted me to uh, go through it and analyze it and see if it's really as good as the people who make this post say it is. And so I will do that. And I will admit I have read through it um, well before I made this video. I have uh, paid attention to these posts. Um, so I do kind of know where I'm going to go with this. But let me just start from the top. So basically, for those of you who haven't read this post, it's a, a post about strategies to use betting teasers in the NFL. But unfortunately, we're on week 18, so any advice you learn from this video, probably you're not going to be able to apply it until next NFL season. But with that being said, um, I still think there's some valuable insights to be had here. And mainly he uses the Wong teaser strategy. I have a video on that subject if you don't know what it is, but it's basically... Um, using a strategy based on lines being between a certain number um, and teasing them in the NFL. They used to be a profitable bet, but um, sportsbooks caught on and raised the juice of teasers in the NFL. And uh, they're blindly following them is no longer profitable. But these people who make this post try to do some additional research and number crunching to see if there's perhaps a subset of things to look for in making NFL teasers that can make them profitable. So they focus on six and 10 point teasers in this post. And they've really just used a sample size of the past four years. And they're looking for certain numbers. I'm not gonna go through it all. You can read it yourself. But pretty much I'm here to analyze what I think of this. So if you scroll down, you can kind of see how the approach of Wong teasers as well as the teasers uh, subsets that they have found out have done. And really the threshold for a six team teaser or a six point teaser is going to be really 73%. So you need each, you need each leg to hit at least 73% of the time for it to be profitable. So you're gonna look at these numbers and you're gonna see all this is above 73% when using the, these criteria that they're talking about. And for 10 point teasers, I wanna say it's like 82% that you need it to hit um, to be each leg to be profitable. And again, everything uh, here except for 2019 is above 82%. Um, so you're probably saying, okay, well, this is a slam dunk. Uh, if I do this, I will win. So what's the catch, right? And that's the same thing I thought when I, was, when I go through this post. So he also breaks it down by week. And then in 2022, really what we're looking for, I want to say this is the six team uh, table. So weeks one, two, four, five, seven, 14, and 15, and 17 would have been the losers. So that's if you round robin to all of the candidates uh, for those weeks in a six team or a six point teaser, uh, you probably would have been about 50 50 uh, based on how that went. But really, um, if you did like a massive round robin right here of all of these weeks, um, you would probably be behind. You wouldn't be ahead. Um, even though this right here, season to date, six point. 6 point, 10 point, 10 point, they're all above the threshold. Hypothetically, it's profitable, yes, right? And then he goes into further detail down here, looking for even more filter criteria, like what the total is, or if it's an underdog or a favorite and all that, and it gets very, very granular. And that's really what I want to discuss because I used to be in this guy's shoes. In 2015 and in 2016, so well before I started this channel and well before I even did my sports betting segments on TV, this was me. I was trying to find profitable angles when it came to teasers in both the NFL and college football. And I did a lot of number crunching 
um, a lot of number crunching. It was pretty ridiculous. And I pretty much did what this guy did. I, I manipulated with a lot of variables like underdogs and favorites, the totals, uh, arbitrary total numbers, uh, what the lines were, how big the spreads were, um, home and away. I even threw in factors like um, where the line was moving, like reverse line movement and all that. I was trying to find angles to bet teasers to make them profitable. And after two years, 2015 and 2016, it was when I was living in Seattle. I remember on Sundays, I would go walk to my office in Seattle and sit down at my computer and just do this, like crunch numbers on Sundays. Back when I was living in Seattle, not making a lot of money and didn't really have a lot of disposable income to do things, that's kind of how I kept myself entertained. And so... I just could not really find an angle that worked. Like every time I thought I found an angle that was profitable and would start betting it, it would all of a sudden turn not profitable. And so I kind of gave up on this whole approach. And I feel like that's the downfall of really this section of the post when he's starting to use totals and favorites and underdogs. Eventually, if you have too much filter criteria in there, you're just really getting to a point where it's overfit. And in modeling, we call that overfitting, where you're model is too precise. It's too, it has too much uh, variables in there. And it's going to do a very good job of predicting past data, the data it's trained on, but it's not going to do a good job at predicting unseen data or data that is not, um, has not happened yet. And so that's what I would recommend the, this, the guy who makes this post to do is to take all this teaser information and plug it into R or Python or something and do a train test split analysis of the stuff to see if it actually does a good job at predicting unseen data or if it just does a good job at predicting things that have happened in the past. And I think that's the ultimate downfall of this post and why it seems like everything he's posting here is a winner because all the percentages are above the threshold that would need for these parlays to be profitable. The problem is it's profitable on past data, past cherry pick data. So the training data set that this post is being made on, yes, it's profitable, but can it do a good job at predicting unforeseen data? I don't think so. And that's why I think blindly following this post, um, and the strategies and tactics, tactics in this weekly post when it comes to NFL teasers ultimately won't be a profitable endeavor. Like I said, if it was, then a lot of people would be following this post. They would be betting money based on this post and sports books would be raising the juice yet again on their teasers like they did after they found out the Wong teaser was an exploit uh, for them. Similar to how in Star Wars with the Death Star and the only place you could shoot the Death Star to blow it up, you're good. they're going to cover their bases. And if this post truly had knowledgeable information that could really make you a lot of money betting teasers, um, I think the sports books would have adjusted by now. Like I said, it all looks, based on the numbers he posts in here, it all looks good. It, and I thought the same thing when I was first going through it, through this. I was like, wow, maybe there is something to it. But then I remembered my own experience doing this same exact stuff back in the day, overfitting. Um, the model is too biased is what we call it in the data science world, a bias model that's going to do a very good job at predicting past data, but not so much at predicting unseen data or future data. And that's what's going on here. So now is this probably the best way to bet the NFL? In my opinion, it is, uh, but it's not going to be a source of profit or riches for you, it might cause you to break even or come close to it. And it can make watching the NFL a lot more exciting, but it's just not a way, in my opinion, that's going to be a, I don't, I don't even want to use, use the word surefire, but it's not going to be a strategy that's going to cause you to come out ahead in the long run In the short run, medium run, perhaps, but long run, no, um, <laughs> The best way to know if it's a profitable strategy in the long run, the sports books are going to adjust. If you see them adjust their teaser payout tables again, then yeah, this this was a way to go. But they haven't done it yet. And so with that being said, I think sports books don't really fear this approach yet. And based on my experience crunching numbers, it's not one to be feared. So I'm not going to crap all over the guy who does this. What's his name? Dutex um, and Blackjack Counter. 
I'm not going to crap over those two people that uh, create this post week in and week out. Um, that's not what I'm going to do. They do a lot of research. They do a lot of number crutching, and that's that's to be encouraged. They're not just touts that just throw things out and pull things out of their ass. They actually do the research. They do the number crutching, and that's to be commended and applauded. I wish more people did that. Even if it's not a way that's going to show a long-term profit, it's still um, it, it's a good thing. Um, they're doing good work here and I respect what they do. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say for this video. Uh, let's talk about teasers. Well, too long, didn't read. If you want a overall summary of this video, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And this is no exception with that being said, uh, at least it has some, uh, reasoning behind it. So it's not blind betting and it's better than that. Um, you guys have been watching Sports Betting Truth. Again, stay tuned right here to Sports Betting Truth for more uh, analysis like this so you can get actual sports betting advice instead of the garbage and trash that pretty much everyone else peddles out there when it comes to sports betting. See ya!